winter. It's a winter Love Island. It's a bit. I the no one watches a conversations a little bit. Yeah, naff. But the one guy we love is Will the farmer. The Will the farmer. Oh him! I saw he's, he's sheep, already like, with his yeah. sheep and he yeah. shears them. He's and like already like... TikTok famous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. He's, he's so funny. He's hilarious, right. but he's not like coupled up. Oh, he's no. like a bit. Um, he's he is wonderful, but so different to the well, others. All the women like fair straps as well. It's like not into. Yeah. I really They're not. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's all right. The you can't is, not watch it though. It's the sh like the, that show is just it's great, but it's it's the same thing, which is different people. The yeah. same. They've also tried to recreate the same cast mm. from every other oh, season, yeah. so it's not really. They've also one of the things they have done. They've stopped all their social media. I saw that. So they can't use in all their bios. It says, "I've gone on Love Island. See you soon." So nobody can post. So basically, they don't get the big following. But surely people are still going to follow them. Yeah. yeah how can you stop people? From yeah, doing no, that? they are, mean, like, but not to the same extent. As in, like Molly May came out with like three mil. I feel like you watch it and you still say her name though. Yeah. I have, I have been that person, but I've not followed them. Interesting. Why for that reason? You're such no, a nerd, I've, you know. No, I just, I've just, I've just been looking at their Instagram pages. Oh. Uh, I don't want to follow her because I to be a told me. Yeah. No, not because of <laughs> until that they give me the green yeah. light. I ain't no, following. No, because they're obviously they're not they're not posting anything that I'm interested in, and they're obviously not posting for six weeks anyway. Yeah. Don't do me like that. <laughs> Don't do that. You're so sad. <laughs> you are like the Uber Just start now. the podcast. We already are. College recording. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, we start. Oh, God. Oh, oh no. Oh, mate. Okay. God, be that was straight in. For God's sake. Carl, Carl was telling me before, though, that you went to Brit school. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. I'm getting the vibe. That's kind of like... Have you? Oh God, you've got your research there. Haven't no, you? not not too much. Oh, I yeah, we've we, 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 we done oh, a full no. background track. No. Yeah, I'm not like, doing like this. Okay. Weird serial killer shit. <laughs> it's just um that jumps out to me. It's like Cranbrook, you know, like on eight mile ways, like spitting bars and talking about like the private school. Yeah. If this was like your moments, like where you've got to spit bars and like tell people everything about reveal who you are. What 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 do we need to know? Or what do people need to know that they don't know? Whoa. Um. Put you on the spot. That is a lot. You, you know what? I I actually I don't often talk about this, and I, I'm planning to talk about it on my social soon. Um, everyone thinks that I am from this extremely huge wealthy background mm -hmm. and I was born in Chelsea and I did Made in Chelsea and there's all of that. It couldn't be further from the truth. Like I don't come from a rich background at all. My parents are not rich. Um, I hustled like my father did and made a name for myself and then um, it, come, going on the show was it just kind of happened it wasn't like oh he's from this background he needs to go on the show um is this so, basically eight mile yeah but, well <laughs> yeah like i i grew up in a council estate like i didn't i wasn't in this you know huge mansion house that everyone thinks mm. i was you know my father later on and as i got older he made a bit more money and then you know grew a business and then we were okay later but i know i was never brought up in that so I think that's a lot. Of, a lot of people think all the time because my parents live in the South France. Like, oh yeah, you live in the South France. Like you're bougie and you're like, like not, not really. Mm -hmm. Like my parents are super chill and like money's never been a huge thing. Um, Were you so, a tailor? Yeah. yeah, I was. Wow, that's super interesting. Yeah, I was a tailor at Reese for two years. I that love was, that. Yeah, 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 pinning up suits. Um, that was fun. I enjoyed it. It was a bit of a, a weird career move, but yeah. Can I ask why you've not shared that on social media yet, that your background? Um, I think mainly because already a lot of people don't know, they look at me and they, they're very judgmental on, okay, they see things on the show. If you follow me on social media, you'll see a bit of a difference in me in, in terms of like my character and what you see on TV. And I think a lot of people forget that I'm mixed, um, that my background's a bit different. And I think, cause you're on Made in Chelsea, mm. it's like you have to fit a category. And in the beginning, when I started the show, I was very, I guess business smart in my head and said, okay, if I wanna make a name for myself, I've gotta follow that book mm -hmm. and go, okay, this is what I've gotta do. I've gotta act a certain way. I've gotta maybe up my poshness. I'm, I'm well-spoken already cause that's just, because of my mother, mm -hmm. um, but it was like, it was in my head, I was like, okay, I've got to make this work for me. Um, and that's, yeah, that's probably why. Oh, wow. Mm. Did you get, 
I, I mean, I don't understand how, do you get casted for it? Do you get plucked off the street? Have they sit, like, um, how does that even, uh, like, how did you all of a sudden, because you're one of the main people now, made in Chelsea, like, how does that even happen for someone? Uh, it was, oh, I don't know if I can, should I say the truth? Or should I say <laughs> You've what? done it now. <laughs> oh, um, the, the way that the people cast on the show is your friends are friends. That's genuinely how it happens. Mm. Like people know each other and then you kind of go on the show. Mm. I wasn't that at all. I didn't know anyone. Um, I got, I was working in marketing and one of the directors who was looking for an event I was working with and helping him film at a location. And then they met me and they were like, I was wearing typical Chelsea boots, skinny jeans at the time, like this fur coat. I looked very Chelsea. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I looked at it. And they were like, yeah, we'd love you to come on the show. Um, and I was like, mm, not really what I want to do. Called my dad and my dad was like, just do it. If you don't like it, just quit. Mm -hmm. And five years later, I'm still doing oh, yeah. it. <laughs> Is that what it's been, five years? Yeah. Wow, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, long time. Yeah. I feel old now. And like, especially now, like there's new kids. Like I met this, I shouldn't be, well, anyway, no one will know who he is, but there's a new kid coming on the show and he's like 19 and we're talking. And I'm like, whoa, you are young. And it's really weird being a like, dynamic. Yeah. yeah, because I was like, I was, I was like nearly your age when I started, so it was weird. What was it like, kind of behind the scenes then, in terms of like not filming on set, like set? How much is like set up, scripted? How many things you got like hit? So everyone says it's a scripted show. It's not. It it not really at isn't. All. No, there's no script. We don't get like a weekly script going. Oh, this is what you're saying. There's or nothing. Or like, or not even like. It, it, cause some of it seems it's like fall out with this person or create drama around this person or so not necessarily scripted but is there something you're kind they're saying like create it's, drama it's constructive reality constructive reality mm -hmm. that's constructive the reality that's that. in my contract <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's yeah. constructive reality uh no it's it's basically like the thing that people need to understand is people are more aware of how reality TV works. Like no one's stupid now, yeah, you yeah. get it. Especially with like Love Island, all these like shows, Top to Hand, all that. Like people go on it because they want a bit of fame or whatever it is. And you, I think the audience are learning that there's a way to do it. But the way Chelsea is, is that it's, it looks like a movie. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's so beautifully filmed that a lot of people are like, surely it's fake, mm -hmm. but it's just that production takes a long time so when you see a scene that's maybe three minutes long that could have been four hours of filming yeah really? and they just cut things out mm -hmm. have they ever cut things out that's kind of made you look terrible or for do you know somehow they're yeah. quite clever and they could cut out you apologizing and just being like you're a dick <laughs> or, or do you know and where they've they've been <laughs> clever for drama um, and you look, you've watched it back and think like, I did not say that. Oh, I you trying to say Miles is a dick? No, no, no. I'm just thinking of like <laughs> any circumstance where they, the way they filmed these, this yeah. four hours and then it's like three minutes and you're like, whoa, it's, it's, that's so out of context. That didn't even happen. I think sometimes yes, because you've got to remember a conversation when you normally have it with someone is maybe an hour over an hour and the show's only an hour. So when you think about how, there's like what? 10, 15 conversations happening in one episode. Mm -hmm. So you've got to think that you've got to cut that down so much. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you will get cut. Um, and sometimes I do feel like the last season for me was tough because I felt like I was portrayed in a certain way that wasn't me. And I did actually speak about it openly on my socials and um, I got a lot of backlash. And it, it did, it affected me more than I realized. Uh, even my sister was like, I can tell you're not okay. And I was like, mm, because when you try to be yourself and then you're in an environment where you may have to have an argument or you have to talk about something and it's, you know, the whole show is about gossip um, and you can't really run away from that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it sucks and you kind of have to deal with it. Um, but the majority of time you, they do portray you as authentically as, as they can. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they, again, because it's an hour, they've got to cut things out. Mm -hmm. But that's what social media is like in general, isn't it? Because it's like, if we do a minute video on Instagram, it's like, how can I get myself across as quick as possible, aggressively as possible, so people yeah. fucking listen. Then, get your message. Then you've got the opportunity on a podcast, just like have open conversation where you can then expand on like 
the conversations, whatever they are. Yeah, no. it's gonna be the same thing, but like in a way more. Yeah, but vast we're version. Yeah, I guess social media, but this is more like this is broadcasted to who millions of people. Yeah, yeah but you gotta get the bits like that, that yeah. are fucking on steroids. I mean, that are gonna pop like and mm-hmm. and be good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like the uh, social media, TV, all of this is all. It's all a lie really until you have like these real conversations that's why i think podcasts are so well mm-hmm. so good because you get to have the unedited filtered version of someone yeah you know so you can't hide on it mate and that's, that's really big of it as well no not at all we've had some questions from listeners as well i think we'll probably go through a couple of them we go through yeah i think the most one that we had frequently was what's your number <laughs> that was a, that was a big one and then the next one was what's your body count Whoa. <laughs> um, you don't, you don't have to answer that one but yeah no <laughs> i'm not but, gonna answer that one but, but this this leads on to our next question yeah do you think it matters what a girl's body count is and do you think there's a difference between like what a guy's is and how that's perceived yeah and then what a girl's is oh my god you, this is crazy right this is a topic that Did you I get your fucking cover. spade ready mate <sighs> Fuck. No, <it's> um <sighs> God, how, how do I answer this? You um, won't offend me. <laughs> I, w- I always think as well, by the way, is, and I, I'm the same when I answer these questions, is that like, I think if you're just as honest as possible, I don't think you can be like cancelled for shit because yeah. you've got nowhere else to go. Yeah, it's true. No, it's true. I mean, and it, like, uh, especially all these conversations are happening at the moment of like men and female, like, mm-hmm. like, like what, what's what's going on here? Um, I, in general, I don't care. Like if a girl has got a high body count, I I, normally I wouldn't really, really care. Mm-hmm. Um, what I've noticed is girls that I've met who have a high body count are usually girls that I love to go out and party. Mm-hmm. I've removed myself from that side of my life. Like I used to, I'm in my late twenties now. I kind of wanted something a bit more chilled and settled down. So for me, it does matter in that sense, but I, I really wouldn't care. And again, for men, I think it's very different. I think people need to understand that men and women are very different. Mm-hmm. Women, well, men generally, they can have sex with no attachments, no feelings. Unfortunately, when women do have sex and they orgasm, they release a hormone and an attachment to someone. Mm-hmm. So it's very different. Um, and I think a lot of people forget that. And that's why it's, I always say, be careful when you do one night stands or whatever, like live your life hundred percent, be single, be respectful. But you got to remember sex for men is very different with sex with men uh, mm-hmm. with women so that's that's how i would see it yeah i didn't really answer thoughts? it but i did <laughs> yeah. no i no cuz i i i know yours and you know mine and they're wildly different yeah. they they're vastly different and knowing that ben is the last person for me is all that i need to know yeah. and that makes me quite comfortable i absolutely do agree though we are very emotional everyone that i have ever slept with I thought that I was going to be with them. Like, do you know what I mean? It's You don't, yeah. I tried friends of benefits. I'm thinking, whoa, we're not just friends though. And they're yeah. like, no, we are. And I'm like, whoa, but we're not because we've slept together. Yeah. And it's, it. and I absolutely do agree that it is different for guys and girls. And I don't mind saying that because some girls would be like, no, no, I'm not, but, but it is different. It is. I'm emotionally connected to those people. I never cared. I don't even know <laughs> if I, I don't think we even asked for what you're down I think the line. I don't think I well even cared. I think like in some social groups as well, guys are like, oh, you have slept with this many people. Whereas girl, girl, generally, Girls I think don't females share. would be more like, we don't would, share. Want to, would want to like, in this sense, you'd want to like lower your number. Whereas guys would be like, yeah. I want to fucking add t- 10 on. You could probably like yeah. minus, plus 10 to women, minus 10 for men. You'd probably be there. I mean, with a boys group, it was like, oh, how many how many girls you slept with? Yeah, yeah. All the boys are like, yeah, fucking, you know, 100. This. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah, okay, cool, mate. Uh, but, yeah, actually girls do. I've, like first year of uni, I remember we were doing, what's that drinking game where it's like, never have I ever. Oh yeah. And someone said a number and no one drank, so I didn't drink, but I was above it. Oh, but no yeah. one drank, so I'm thinking. Do you were above it? Just, a, I was just <laughs> above. The number, just two people? I think the number was quite low. Whatever they said, it was quite low, but mm. no one drank, so I fucking didn't drink. Yeah, I'm not, of course. I'm sa- but whereas, so that's me as a woman, whereas I think you, well, yeah, you'd have been like thousand. <laughs> Two, 200 but yeah, yeah it was definitely bullshit. it's definitely different for yeah. girls but do, and guys do you, okay do you take a girl that's got a body count of 100 or in 100k of debt would i sorry say again so would i take a girl that is a you've got to choose she's either got a body count of 100 or she's in 100k worth of debt uh whoa that's mm. an interesting question um 
hundred is quite high. Uh, yeah, hundred k is. So is a hundred grand. No, I, I, you're I'm taking at... on that responsibility as well. Um, are you though? It's her responsibility. You, uh, I oh god that that's <laughs> like I'm trying to think in my head like what uh oh yeah I'd probably take the hundred grand in debt yeah yeah I would I think yeah. I think what what would you do because I think again men's and women's perspective on this could be quite different because what men and women value is different so is mine either picking the guy slept with a hundred people or the guys in a hundred k of debt let's be honest if you ask the girl that question who is single. I'm pretty sure she would say a hundred, a hundred girls. Yeah, yeah. I, she'd pick, I, she'd well, pick the... I, I think based on like, if you look at what on the average of what women value, women value power, wealth, intelligence yeah. in, in general. So like if you're taking a guy who's got hundred K's of debt, they're going to be a low value male. Yeah, of course. And also that takes away from, I guess, a traditional relationship of, you know, the man takes care of you on the, your first few dates, he's going to take you out. He's going to pay for things. Yeah. And women don't want that as much as they want to uh, uh, disagree and say, no, equal rights and all this. It's like, uh, well, no, you, it isn't. It's not all, it's not like that in all aspects of life, especially in a relationship. Um, it's, it's, it's really weird topics, these, cause it's like, you don't really know where or what to say Yeah. because a lot of, a lot of people, I, I think I agree with that. What you just said, I think that's, that's the way I, I see things, but and nowadays, especially with a lot more <clears throat> things on social media, it's people are getting canceled for saying these sort of things. But I, I sometimes question those things in terms of like, we, we we can sometimes see backlash, backlash, but the backlash is from like a minority who then like in an echo chamber and it sounds like their voice is louder than it is, where yeah. the majority of people will probably agree with you if they're, if they're being honest. Yeah. But usually if people are more agreeable, like they're not the people who are like liking your post or coming on your post. The people who, like disagree with you are usually the people like leaving comments and stuff. Whereas most of the bypass are the ones that are, like nodding their head, going, "Yeah, I actually agree with that." Yeah, yeah. It's just difficult to navigate and feel like you're not going to be called out for something. Yeah, I, don't, I I kind of just bring it back to like my parents. Like I look I look at the relate. My parents are still together, and they're you know a marriage every thirty years. And trust me, they've had their ups and downs, but they're solid and they love each other and they put the work into <clears> it. And growing up, seeing how the dynamic was there. You know, um, you know, my mother supported my dad when things were bad with him. And then once he was great, my dad took charge. And that's how I see things. Like I want, for me in a relationship, I want to be the person who earns and takes care. Mm -hmm. And I want, like, I had a, an amazing, you know, nurturing mother who took care of me when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, and that for me is is in really important, like really important to have those two relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think people are just so scared and be like, no, 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 it has to be like, now everyone has got to swap roles. It's like, why? Yeah. It's, would, um, you, would you not date someone then or be with someone who one earns more than you or is more successful? Would you not date a woman in that Difference. Sphere? Successful, like success, it, it, de it depends how you see success. If you see success as money, I'll do it in the sense of she owns her own business. Yeah. That kind of. Um, no, I, I, I love that. Yeah. I think if you are, you've got your own business. Like for me, if you, if I date someone who has no drive and does nothing, oh my God, it, it doesn't matter how hot you are, how amazing you are. I don't care. That is unattractive to me. Mm -hmm. You have to have some sort of drive. Um, if you're super successful, amazing. But if it takes over your whole life and you're not leaving room to, Think about wanting to have kids or the nurturing of that that relationship then i'm not really interested like i've dated someone who was extremely high up in the business and i'm not going to say a name because everyone knows who that person is uh and but you can tell us after, I'll see you after. <laughs> uh, and i found it interesting because during the dates it was very much trying to show off to me yeah and i was like i really couldn't care less like it's great that you've got this but like it's I'm not here to for that. So that yeah, that I I've had like a few examples where I didn't really like it, mm. but I a hundred percent if you if you're successful, love that. I, I think it's rare that you'd probably find that where like a, a an Uber successful woman will be dating a guy who's less successful or wealthy because it's like a stat. No, though, because isn't it? because women will majority of the time date across and up, whereas men will date across and down. Mm. So that's why women's jeep, like oh, right. dating pool is becoming so small because women in society become more and more and more successful, which yeah. means their dating pool is really, really small. We are good. 
we are doing good shit, I, 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 uh, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, successful, successful women. I'm but joking. like, they, no, it is there. Like, it, it is right. Yeah. Women are doing really well in like education, society, jobs, businesses, whatever it is. But it just means the dating pool is super small because women majority of the time won't date down. A hundred percent. It's so true. But like, why, why, why should you though? Either like, you wouldn't want to just a, a dude who's sitting on his fucking PS4 at home and his boxes all day just. Doing fuck all. No, but that's I don't, one of those I don't disagree things. With it. Probably more so what you're attracted to. As you said, I could, ne- I couldn't be with someone who wasn't into fitness as one of my you uh, yeah. sport. It's my I do it a lot. Yeah, they need to do it. They need drive, determination, and be good looking. I don't, I don't think it's like having those three things that were always my like non negotiables, yeah. and that's just how. I don't know what I've, just, everyone has like but not money mine was never monetary mine was always mm. drive like i met ben five six years ago he had just started the business yeah like just started so the drive was there the passion the fitness the, the looks potential. everything mm. she, she i saw is. potential <laughs> damn I'm we're gonna be rich baby he just, all he just sell the business <laughs> like yeah <laughs> no, but it's, but i that, was thinking six years but ahead no, a, no but that is great because you look at all these like athletes and these successful men like you know for example conor mcgregor when he was in thousands and thousands of pounds of debt and he was fighting he was making her money he was making a name for himself she stood by him yeah you know and they're still together like regardless if, if rumors coming out or whatever of them now but like that is powerful and seeing if you're in a, an early relationship and you can see that your man is driving to to get that and to get that amazing life that he deserves and to for both of you Mm. that's amazing Mm. and you know that should that's how i see things as well in a relationship Mm -hmm. but as as, uh, on the plus side also for her like i would want her to to be able to want to go for her passion and and do really really well in whatever she wants to do Mm. i think like obviously the other thing that's changed the dating game is obviously the online stuff and like dating apps and stuff like that and then you've even got things like only fans which come into yeah the occasion which is which i think has also changed the dam- dynamic of like one how couples make money because i think there's loads of couples on it yeah. and then two obviously a lot of a lot of women do you think you could ever date someone who's had an only fans no. no i i um i spoke about this on another podcast it, it's it's um i have friends who do only fans and i highly respect it like you these girls are making bank like it's crazy the amount yeah, of money yeah. they make in a month. Yeah, you know, like, and I really respect that. And you're 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 hustling in your own way, but I'm sorry, like in a relationship, your my body's yours and your body's mine. Mm-hmm. That's it. I don't want anyone to see that. Like, I don't like. It's it's I don't know, again. People may hate what I'm gonna say, but like even like in Instagram, if if I'm dating a girl and she's doing really revealing and kind of you know sexual poses we're not together yeah. like i'm not i'm not going to be with you like i don't find that attractive like there's a when you're single do what you want like 100 percent. but if you're doing certain things and you have to respect the relationship you're in you're you're showing that you're kind of not in a relationship if you're doing that sort, sort yeah. of stuff and only fans is like if you're making money and you're living your life great do it but i i i personally wouldn't be with someone who's only fans no i couldn't yeah I think like I think, and that's like you can't delete that. Which I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm she's about not. to announce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Link in bio. Link in bio, everybody. <laughs> Exclusive content. As long um, as I take like seventy five percent. No, cool. but that's one of those things. Like even the social media thing, I have turned down a lot of like lounge underwear, yeah, skimpy underwear for the fact that yeah, you can make a lot of money, but I don't, I don't want to for other people to see me in my underwear mm. because that's for Ben's eyes only. Mm. I stopped kind of doing like the sort of glute posy post that we did. I did at the start of our relationship. I was like, you know what? I just, that's not for other people. Cause it's, ve- thirst, yeah. it's a thirst trap. Like I, I don't want to be known for that. Like I'm with someone. Yeah. So I absolutely agree on that side of social media. Only fans. Yeah. Like absolutely. Yeah, but not. like, it, it's also the question who, who is the content being created for? Like, it, yeah, it's, it's you're not creating fun, it for yourself. It's for I some nerdy think. guy sitting at home who's spaffing off into a handkerchief. Like, it's not for but like anyone spaffing. else. Yeah? Spaffing, spaff, yeah. spaff, yeah. spaffing everywhere. Yeah. That's a disgusting word. What spaff into a sock. I didn't say sock. What have you been doing? <laughs> no, but that's just on, no. That's always on films, isn't that's it? That's old school. Yeah, it's going into a oh, sock. Is that not a yeah. thing anymore? If you find crossy socks, that is yeah. not. Well, where no. are you doing it? Where does it go? Uh, what my my is mate? That why, is that why? 
Miles got extra socks. <laughs> Here you go, mate. You need no, it. But like, you know what you're like, son. If it's not going in a sock, where where uh, where I, is it I, going? I, on the magazine. My I've mate, my mate's got. Uh, he stands up, <laughs> and he's like, he's got his wardrobe. He's gonna kill me. I'm not. He, he knows who he is right now. He's in his wardrobe and he just stands up and he's there. And it goes that direction onto the wardrobe. I guess. And so. then you just wipe it wipe off. Wipe it off. Yeah. It's like projectile. There's buffing, surely better yeah. ways to do that. Like I think the sock would have been a good. I mean, no. when I was younger, <laughs> Cal's mortified because he's thinking Lucy actually wants to know the answer, but yeah. I just because I don't know these sort of questions. Well, when you're younger, you have a whole setup. I remember when I was when you first started watching <laughs> yeah. porn and stuff. Like I, it was like towel things yeah. you know you'd be like it's an hour process yeah. like hopefully not the door mum doesn't come in you're like set in like and you would it would be like a quick wipe like yeah. it'd be yeah. easy nowadays i don't uh, there's no care really now yeah, like, yeah. I, I remember having like it was like windows microsoft 98 <gasps> and then you'd hear it breathe yeah, and then i had like a4 paper all around in yeah. front of me like my dad would come in like where the fuck's all the paper gone yeah, for the yeah. printer? If you want to print docker, I, 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 all over it. I, <laughs> I um, broke my sister's laptop. This is, uh, it was a house laptop, but she, my dad bought it for her, but it was the house laptop and it was a Microsoft. And at the time when you get viruses, there'd be bugs eating your screen. So I was watching and like Beatles side eating the screen and broke the laptop and parents were like, what happened? And I was like, no idea. I was just playing a game. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. So sorry. Sorry, Jess. Broke the laptop. What? What is your opinion on if you're in like a long term relationship with someone? I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> what is your opinion on the other people watching porn? Um, like if you were in a long term relationship and your partner was watching porn, would that make you feel a certain type of way? I, you know what, I don't know because I've never had a partner who did watch porn whilst mm -hmm. being in a long term relationship. Like the, I was in a three year relationship and I probably watched porn maybe four times in that three-year period i know she definitely didn't um it upset her when she found out that i did mm. um i i guess it maybe depends what she's watching yeah <laughs> like if if i see like mandingo just going for it yeah just like you know like <laughs> gang bang and then, you know, i'm like <laughs> what do you want <laughs> so i don't know like also i feel like if you're in a really healthy sexually active relationship like you don't need to watch porn like i know some couples watch porn together that can be a thing. Mm. People are into different things. Like that's fine. I think if you're if you're trying to hide it, maybe that's a bit of a problem. Yeah. You know. I think like one of the things that I've thought about, especially this year, is like what does it take away from a relationship? Mm. Like if if you're doing that, like if, 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 like even in simple terms. So for example, say you've got two people. Um, we we'll call him John. John's gone to his windows, whatever it is now, and just had a morning spaff. Later at night, like if his partner gets in and is like what, gets to bed and wants to have sex, what is the likelihood that he's gonna have the energy? Yeah, the the, the is kind it of really that libido hard for a man, a man, man it's worse. Yeah, is it? Yeah. So like it's 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 not gonna be the same. So I'm trying to think of that as well. Like how does it actually affect my relationship? Like short and long, long term. We we've had very open conversations about it because I think you have to. Mm. Like we don't. We're in that stage where we don't we don't need to watch porn. Like yeah. it's. You have, but also it can be really. Aw I remember having the first conversation. I was like, "Hi, do you watch porn?" Like I was really like, I and was, he was quite, like, "Yes." She, she found I think, every I night. Found a farm animal stuff in the history. Yeah. I think at the time though, we'd only been together for like a year. Yeah. And I think he was still watching it a bit, and I'd watched, it and it wasn't. It's like okay, like that's fine, and but then now like we're about to get married. But I was also like slamming testosterone as well. So I was like horny as anything. Yeah. Like testosterone levels are like a 16 year old yeah, boy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but now we're about to get married. It's kind of like we've moved away from that. But I think having the initial conversation is actually really important in a relationship. Because yeah. if if he was watching porn every night and I didn't know, I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, because porn's really unrealistic. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, as in, you don't look like the people, you don't do what they're doing. It just doesn't happen like Honestly, that. Honestly, I, I filmed myself having sex once, right? With my partner years ago watched it back i couldn't believe the atrocity <laughs> i saw i was like that is got a go i delete straight away I was like, there is no way i look like that you're thinking oh great smooth looking great, doing, <laughs> doing great pumps and all that and you're like trust me when you watch yourself back it is a sweaty mess it looks nothing like in the movies trust <laughs> nothing like movies nothing like porn it sucks yeah. so then then when you watch porn you're like this is this is fake yeah yeah especially it is quite fit I, I think, think it's very 
it's all very staged and very stops and starts yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think also from a woman's perspective it's also like very degrading to to most women as well in what, what in what sense because then most of them end up like just getting spaffed on don't they like spaff towel so spaff towel <laughs> sorry this spaffing is mad well i need to cut these bits out carl <laughs> um so yeah, I think, but yeah, it's definitely degrading to women. I th- I feel especially like in those gangbang scenarios and stuff. It also for like young men creates unrealistic scenarios yeah. of like what you should be like or what you should be doing or like how you should be treating a woman. Or what 100%. you expect? What you expect us to look like? Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> we don't look like yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, no, I think also like I I I'm so lucky that porn was quite late when I was when when it was like kind of like on the computers and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nothing like it is now like you know you can literally find anything and for kids or who are starting to be a bit more sexual with themselves or whatever like i remember when you know you you're touch yourself you you're i didn't watch anything when i was a kid mm. like literally it was just my imagination um, and then later on obviously you'd watch things so i can only imagine you know a young 13 14 year old kid like watching all these things it's like it's graphic as hell. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? The access as well is like more, like especially for young males, we've got access to more like skin, mm. porn, like literally just on tap. I remember the first time ever for me, like it was a rubber mum's like underwear magazine. Took it to my mates. I was like, where am I looking at this? Your mum's underwear magazine? Yeah, she used to order like brought, like that was the only woman I'd ever saw in my life. Oh, was, like, sorry. In fucking, I thought you meant, no, yeah, It was like okay, some like, catalog thing, which like, it's not as messed up as you thought he would. Yeah, yeah. Wow, like, what yeah. did you think I was talking about? Like your no, mum's sorry, underwear. Thought- I, I that thought, been yeah, weird, I yeah. got really. No, it was like one of those August magazines, yeah. like full of underwear. Yeah, yeah, go to the like, underwear section. Yeah, right, and then his mum found it and then told my mum, we we're like, shit, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I understand. Sorry, I kind of it's really <laughs> just Yeah, me but off. I think there's like, is that access to it? Do you, th- do you see the thing about like Terry Crews and stuff as well? Yeah, like a. Oh my God, that a porn the, addiction. The podcast. The yeah, pod, yeah, yeah. That is my favorite interview. Um, It was so enlightening to, to, to listen to and see, you know, one of the, one of the biggest celebrities in the world. Um, be so honest about that because mm. fuck me like that's like that's intense to say yeah. like you know my wife leave, leave, left me for it and you would never think someone had when i hear people who have porn addictions like i i, I don't understand it because i don't really watch it that much so p- someone who's watching it constantly like that and having to do that throughout the day is crazy um and to go through that i just can't imagine what it's like i think like what the reason why some people can get like addicted to it is because they'll i'm sure he mentioned it in the interview like scroll through different pornographic videos like waiting for the perfect one like waiting yeah, for the a better one and like they'll just get consumed in it and, like hours just just pass yeah. by in it which is crazy and then you got people like i think we spoke about last week dan bilzerian like a sex addiction as well yeah. and people are like wow it must be ace but then he's just spending hours and hours and hours a day like he said i was so unproductive during that period and everyone he, thought it was is amazing he still addicted to sex Probably. I mean, probably didn't yeah. help again that he's banging I mean, testosterone and yeah. But, I mean, he's like if he's got those sort of models around him day in day out all the time, wanting him as well. Yeah. Like he's not gonna say no. He's like the push on the pedestal and like he's the the, the prize. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think they're not literally. I think Ali's in the house. No. Have you seen Ali G in the house? I know That's who good. he is, but I think never that was before. Know. No. You've never seen Ali. Oh my god. It might have been before me. What? Actually, no, I've, because I think you're you're 27, aren't you? Yeah. And oh, no, I'm 26. That doesn't work. That, that wouldn't make sense. I know yeah. what Ali he looks G. like. He wears the yellow, yeah. the yellow outfit with the yeah, yellow booyaka, glasses. Booyaka. Yeah, 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 I haven't booyaka. watched it. <laughs> I haven't watched it. We need it. to watch it. Yeah. So you have. Insane. What that is. You have. I don't think. Am I going to yeah. enjoy it though? Yeah. You would. Yeah, honestly, it's so funny. I hold that. To like it's about like sex, like inappropriate comments. It's dark humor and it's just it's brilliant. Like Borat. Yeah, it was like the original. That Borat. was funny. I like yeah. that one. <laughs> it, was like the it was very version, similar right? to that. Just thinking yeah, about that, but I, in a different character. Do you know what was really weird about Borat though? When you told me he's one of the most intelligent people, he is very, very I intelligent. I was. Is Sasha Cohen? He does yeah. it. He does it on purpose to do all these roles. If you see yeah. all his roles, he does is taking the piss and things. But he's a very smart yeah, yeah. man. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think it's quite. A I know one of the questions that you were asking before. That I, th- I think telepathically, I was clicking onto what you thought she was going to ask. You were saying, do you think it's different when? I think you might have spoke about this before when a, a single woman or a woman in a relationship goes on holiday. That's like, you, you thought that's what the question I was going to ask, wasn't it? Or oh, that's what she uh, was asking. I spoke about this. I know you did. That's why I asked. And I got a backlash. I got loads of backlash on this, um, but I still stand by it. Um, unfortunately, there is, well, no. Uh, I don't think you did get loads of backlash because what will happen is, yeah, there'll be loads of guys at home going, and there'll be yeah. like a, a minority of people who are like, 
I don't know. So my, my so Charlie, who's on the podcast with me, he asked me the question. He was like, you know, um, would you still do lads' holidays when you're in a relationship? And I said no, because the whole purpose of the lads' holiday is to get with girls, go out, get drunk, fucking do the time. <laughs> but that's, yeah, but you don't really do it anyway. That man's now. a stag do. No, that's yeah. different. That's, that's, hun- that's different. so different. That's yeah. a, obviously that's very very different. But like, I feel like if I'm in a a relationship, like. I was dating this girl who would go on these crazy holidays to Dubai, to things, and, and with our girls, and I'm like, mm, who's paying for those trips? <laughs> and like, it was just a lot. And I, I just, I don't know if, if I'm in a really healthy relationship, like it's gone away from, you know, oh, you're in a relationship, you don't talk to us anymore. It's like, no, I'm in a relationship. I'm moving on in my life, and you're my girlfriend's gonna be part of that life. Mm. If I go, if my mate asks me, come on this trip, it's gonna boys. I'm, we want to hang out. We want to see you, hundred percent. But day two, day three, my girlfriend's coming out to see me, to be there with me and with you guys. And also, my biggest thing is that I want my mates to absolutely adore my girlfriend. Mm. I want that to happen, and the same vice versa. I don't want it to be like, oh, you bought your girlfriend. Oh, you bought. It's like no, she's part of the crew. So if you're going on these. All the, all the time, Instead, unless it's for like work, or whatever, and you're go- and my girlfriend's going on crazy amount of holidays, partying with her girls. I, I again for me, I'm not interested in that. Like I, I want to be a part of you, a part of that with you, or like, don't get me wrong. Like if she's going on a girls trip with you know a few friends on a weekend away, or like just being with her friends or by a lake or whatever it is, that's fine. But like all these crazy holidays, Ibiza and all that, no, I, I wouldn't. I'm not interested. I know what you're talking about. I think like a lot of times the reason why for men that they will get with a woman is because they will add value to their life mm. and also like make you look like a higher value man. Like yeah. you want to like show off your yeah. partner and that's the kind of thing you're talking about. And then the other side, and I, I definitely saw this in like Dubai and stuff as well. It's mm. just absolute like thirst traps around old men at tables oh. who were just like there for one reason and also could never afford to be there without unless it's being I mean, paid the for yachts, by the guy. the things yeah. you're just a bit like okay yeah like she's a hairdresser from Essex and you're on like the table like she's like 50k it's like you get yeah. there by one reason exactly I absolutely couldn't be with someone who was going on last holidays what yeah what's the problem with and, what Miles is saying yeah and then what, I don't think what about you guys be... do you do you like do you go on girls' trips a lot or girls' holidays or? No. She's, she, I usually keep her locked up at home if I go away, but then, yeah. No, I mean, I, I've been away. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> the... I've, I mean, I've, I'm so in two weeks, I'm, me and my best friend are going to Lanzarote for four days oh, to amazing, have a yeah. break. Yeah. Um, you went to Dubai with two of your best mates to watch the F1. Yeah, that's but, so, that's yeah. kind of our extent. So pre me. Yeah. When you were like, we met at, when Ben was 26. So when Ben was like 17, 18, he did his last holidays. Yeah. I couldn't have been with him then. Mm. I just, that's just, you wouldn't want to I would be, a, yeah, I, I be wouldn't, I would have like been, it's just not, not for me. Whereas if some, if one of Ben's friends, which I don't think they would were like, oh, I should go to like Zanti for a week. I'm thinking, are you fucking, are you going to fucking Zanti for a week? I'll see you at the airport. Like I'll come, I'll be with you. Yeah. Not, not that I'm just thinking you're fucking a grown man. Like, you don't need to go to Zanti for a week to get 100%. pissed with your lads. Go to the Lake District and sit by a lake and have a glass of wine. Well, that, that's well, when... So how would you feel if I went to... It was like, oh, I'm going to Ibiza with the girls. Or not well, some, somewhere a bit scattier. I'm going to like... Do you know what? I think you know, I think Zanti. the majority of people would be like, uh, yeah, have a good time. But like really fucking hate it, but not you'd say anything because they I feel went. like they couldn't say anything. But, but like, you have to say it. Yeah, well, yeah. you'd hate it if I went. Yeah. So right, I'm going to land right with lots. We're fine. We're just sipping wine by yeah. the seaside. Yeah, that's fine. But that, that's that's different. Like it's like <laughs> you're it's you and your girl, and you haven't maybe hung out in a while. Or you're going for a little trip, yeah. taking a break, and you want it. For, yeah, that's so different than going a group of five, six, seven, eight girls. You're most of them are single, and they're all out there for one reason. Mm. I've also, I've never been on a girls' holiday like that. Have you not? No, I grew up as a swimmer until oh, I was wow. 18, so 19. Super athletic. So too. yeah, I wasn't really allowed to drink. I didn't have. Damn. I didn't have that social experience so but you like first year of uni went a bit wild because mm. i hadn't been exposed to it yeah of course and then met ben i think that's a different dynamic though what you just mentioned there is because it'd be different like if you went to ibiza with like a couple of your mates who i know who like are also in relationships, relationships as opposed to like single girls 10 whole bags who are just like going out for one I, reason i i would probably feel a bit uncomfortable because they would be all like wanting to yeah, get like, with I people went, like, but I, i'd be well. like you know when it gets to that <laughs> no, point where it's at the end of the night and it's like okay let's call it 
But then when you're with single people, it's like, let's not call it because mm. we haven't got what we wanted. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, it's, it's, and it's, that's why I, a lot, I mean, you, like you said before, probably a lot of men were like agreeing with me with what my point of view. And a lot of girls are like, no, how dare you? She can do all she wants. She can freedom. It's like, yeah, 100%. Have your freedom without me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, I, I just value like the, beauty of what a relationship is like i want to have fun with my girl i want to yeah. go out i would love to go to like a salsa bar with my girl get horrendously drunk with her and like dance all night and then yeah. go home like 1am and that's it like that's my what i think now but also i'm in a mindset where i am older and i'm thinking of different things whereas when i was younger i probably would have had a different answer but before i used to love party girls i used to be like yeah, yeah. if she parties i party so let's go yeah but you would have wanted to party because like you wanted at that point just to get laid whereas like nobody wants to end up on marry a girl like that do you know what i mean no. same with like when you see people who are posting thirst traps and stuff on yeah. online like it looks great for uh for a said reason but does anybody really want to end up with someone like that no no I, th I think it goes back to that body count thing as well though because if you know someone's got like a a girl's got a high body count the, probably the thing that's maybe in the back of your mind subconscious thinking like i want to go through and experience like a lot of life with it being like her first time to see a certain place or do a certain thing or be in a certain environment yeah. but you know she's already got a high body count she's probably experienced a lot of those things already maybe with different or other men and it's not then the fair it's not as special a hundred percent it's also it's not that so say if you did one last holiday it's like i would look would, yeah like i can't stop you enjoy yourself and it's not that i don't trust you mm. but if you're out with loads of single lads, I think I would feel quite anxious. Of course. I trust you to the end. Yeah. But I'd be sat there at home thinking, why, like, mm, he's not messaged me. But I, it would it would probably make me feel like a little bit like, I don't know, weird. A hundred percent. Like if you're also- Not like you don't trust them though. It's just like- Of course, like you could- I feel a bit- You could go to a night out <clears throat> with your boys. You gotta realize that there's gonna be loads of girls around- the table talking chatting like and everyone's got an agenda like on a night out like let's let's really think about what a club is it's horrendous loud music you can't hear anything it's spending loads of money drinking to get paralytic and hookup society that is what a nightclub is unless you're going to a really cool bar and like a maybe a like a salsa bar whatever it is the majority of it is is it's a place to hook up that's mm. what it is so i i even even without the holiday thing, like even if my girlfriend wanted to go out with the girls and just get absolutely horrendously drunk, like, no. I, I think like what you're probably bringing in there, like even if someone's like the most loyal person in the world or, or whatever they are, like you're looking at kind of like what's the likelihood of them being a cheat or whatever. Hi. You, you then you then going, okay, like what factors are gonna increase that percentage? Going out with a load of the girls who are all single, okay, that, that increased the percentage. Yeah getting absolutely right arsed, okay, that increases the chances. Drugs maybe, okay, that's gonna yeah. increase the chance a little bit more. Then in a place with loads of hot people, okay, yeah. that's gonna increase the chance a little bit more. Now we're out to like three or four in the morning, okay, that probably increases the chance. It's like all those little factors which will then can maybe just- We had an interesting up. conversations, didn't we? Like, I love wearing my engagement ring. Mm. When me and Loz Beautiful. are out, we're like, hey, yeah. don't approach us. Yeah. Like, as in like guys genuinely, when me and Loz go out, so me and my best mate, Guys, genuinely don't approach you because we're just having a girls' night. We've got our rings just don't on. Just show the other side of it. Made in China. Right. <laughs> um, and we've noticed quite a big shift. Mm. <laughs> Me and Ben had a conversation. I was just like, do you know what? I can't wait till you've got your wedding ring on in a couple of months' time yeah. because not that it would stop people, but other people yeah. would know. He's married. Mate, he's got Lu a wife Lucy at would home. have me like fucking Frodo Baggins with Ram and Neck. <laughs> Round your neck, get it, get it plastered. Yeah. But I, we, me and Loz have been like, oh my God, I really noticed like less guys come up to you. Like you, you're genuinely, it shows that you're taken. Yeah. Ben, Ben. Could, no, you ben the, could be a nothing. You were so me the other day. She, she was going, how would you show people your wedding ring in a club? And I went, like, and she went, no, you show it to them like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> it is like, oh. Yeah. No, but, but I just, I am excited for that. Cause I, yeah, it's yeah. just, it's just, I don't think it would stop people from approaching a married man, mm. but it might be a slight, probably, for some people it's yeah. probably more attractive. Yeah, I trust me, I, I've got so many friends who love that aspect. Yeah. See, that makes me feel really sad. Yeah, I is. really, I mean, the thought of like cheating, it just makes me the whole thing just yeah. sad. So another girl who would willingly approach a man with a ring on his finger, think about the wife at home who probably has the kids. Mm -hmm. Just think about it for a second before you approach them. Yeah. I'm against, I'm massively against that. Mm -hmm. 100%. What's the worst lie you've ever told someone to like pie 
a, a woman off? Uh, this question comes up because I think I was it on Love Island last night. It wasn't last night's episode. Is that Shaq guy who like, oh, yeah. told someone he was in the army he was going away? Said he was in the army. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. a big lie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is a big, big lie. Yeah. That's a, bad, that's a bad lie. Wow. Well, that's quite good. I don't know why that don't matter. I love future reference. Um, what's a big lie? <sighs> what have I really lied about in terms of getting out of... Uh, I don't think I've had any really big lies. I'm To be fair, I'm quite upfront with how I feel normally. If I'm dating someone, I'm very much like, okay, this is not working for me. Uh, I have said... To some, my bi- the, the thing I can say the most is I'm really busy at the moment and I just can't handle yeah. something anything serious yeah it's and not the right time it's just not yeah. the right time and then a week later they see me date someone else I'm like yeah but yeah. she's different <laughs> <laughs> it's not you yeah, yeah yeah I don't know I've yeah I've never really said anything that I mean going to the army that's crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. that was also a really weird one because it like the military is like a really respected thing and then it's like going to the army well you're not yeah it's actually really hard to go to the army yeah and be a militant person i think the best one you could just you could probably be honest if you want to turn someone off and just tell them like the microsoft 98 story it's like go back to the good old days yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably a good turn yeah. off for most women which one's that okay we'll, we'll move on from that oh, one the, later, anyway the what's it called spiffling <laughs> what did you call it spaffling spaffling do you know what i really spiffling, I love spiffling. That. Spiffling's better. We got it now, yeah. Spiffling. Spiffling, mate, that's a new one, yeah. There yeah. you go, everyone use that moving forward. <laughs> Sleep, sleeping with a girl on a first date, is that like a massive turn off? Are you like, are you thinking like, that's a keeper or that's, and I want to continue it, or is for you, is that like something, okay, box done, ticked off? And, and like, that's for me, not someone that I like, I value because they've given away things too easily. Um, Because no people got very, like varied opinions. It's like, we've spoken on the way, tr- on the way, down the train yeah and like we were saying we've actually know quite a lot of people who have ended up in like long-term relationships yeah. from even having like a, yeah yeah I, I to be fair i don't have much of a problem with that like my ex we we were t- i mean we're not together together anymore but we were together for three years the first night we hooked up um i always say when girls always say no i'm gonna make him wake i'm gonna make him wait there's no point um a guy will know as soon as he's come basically yeah. if he wants to continue you can you know have the most amazing dates for a week two weeks and it like you feel great you know after that yeah post not clarity <laughs> it's <laughs> so <laughs> true but it's so true like a lot of guys like they'll have sex and they'll wake they'll like as soon as they've come like they're like oh get out please move and like you could have an amazing girl that you fancy and I've, I've been there where like oh my god she's really cool great and then we've hooked up and i'm like I'm just not interested anymore. Is that because the sex was bad or just because there was just no, no chemistry? Not, no. I think it's, uh, maybe for me in the sense, like I've, the, the way I've treated like the, the, uh, the sex is like very more distant to then if you are someone that you really care about, like my ex, the first three times we were in bed were terrible but it was like i was so into her and i was like yeah, yeah. and then we found each other's like what we like and then it, and then it was amazing so i think it just really depends on the person and you can't really if you have sex on the first night great if you wait three four days or a week or whatever that's fine i don't i don't think there's a problem in you know doing it on the first night or not i don't personally but i can see where some people come from like okay that's a bit of a turn off for me because they've already given into things and they have like no maybe substance but then the the other thing that i sometimes think about like Say for example, someone's had a load of or ten one night stands before, and like then I've come to them, and it's like now they're making you wait. It's like what what have I don't have that like these other ten people mm. have had where they just got that thing straight away. Does yeah, that makes sense. Does that make me like a less valuable man, or is there something wrong or different for me that I'm not as attractive or not as something as these other ten people? But I think I think women. Um, when they do that and they go, oh, this time I'm going to make him wait. It's not about the guy. I per se, I think it's like they're trying to change their mindset yeah, yeah. of how they treat the situation, um, which is trying to find a solution to, to a problem that doesn't exist. It's like, okay, well, I shouldn't be sleeping with the, first, the guy on the first night because it's clearly not working. There's a pattern. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make this guy wait. But that doesn't do anything. It, it, again, like I said before, like if a guy really likes you, he'll stick around. Like on the first night or the fifth night, like it doesn't really, really matter. So I think if anyone is in, you know, in that dating period, I think there is an essence of like, it's quite nice. I, for example, have been on a date, I've walked her home 
and like you have this amazing passionate kiss and then she kind of leaves you wanting more that is amazing like a hundred percent that's that's like showing saying don't worry you'll get it but i'm just teasing you a little bit that is hot that i agree but when you have girls who are like no no, no i'm not gonna do anything i'm not I'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait and wait fifth sixth day you're like okay i think cool. if yeah I, so what you said there like really nice day kiss and there's like oh, i want more but i'm just gonna you know yeah. see him again if it's too forced where it's like no like don't like don't touch me that's mm. a bit like whoa you should just let it flow naturally yeah. Like we were well, like as soon as me and Ben saw each other, it was like, oh my God, the chemistry's even just being around each other. We were naturally really flirty. Yeah. And then, yeah, we didn't have sex straight away, but there was just this, a lot of like yeah. natural chemistry that we had before Which we got together. Magnum. No, you, Ben, Ben thought flirting was, he messaged me, messaged me on Facebook messenger. Oh, Facebook did. days. I saw it's on Facebook messenger. Um, we were stay- we were in London. It's the first time I'd met him. It was at this like fitness expo, and I was in like this hotel here, and he was in like the one opposite. And he was like, "Hi, window, not the window. <laughs> Hi, did you want to did you want to come Legend. over to my room for a Magnum? For Mag? Sorry, wait. So I Sorry. thought he meant sex, like come <gasps> not over a for condom. A- yeah, come over no, 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 like a nice cream, Ben yeah. actually meant, and then sent me a picture of a white box of Magnums. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> Like, no thanks, I'll see you in the morning. Were they all like the dream? No, shop, no, it was more so because <laughs> at the time when we when we first met, like we just first introduced each other, we were with other people. Yeah. I fancied Ben so much when I met him, like the chemistry. I think if I had gone over to have the white magnum. You would have had the something other magnum. Could, something, yeah. we, we the probably, other magnum. we could have yeah. probably been disloyal and that would have been incorrect. Like there was some sort of weird fiery passion that was so intense and I was like. I mean, did I you want- know what you were doing? Yeah. You don't just yeah, mess course, Facebook yeah. message. Do you want to come and have a magnum? Yeah. What? Come and sit in your room across Niche. the hall to have a white magnum? Mm, no. Love that. And something like so. We were quite good there. We were just like no, like, and mm. then we called off the people and then got together. So that's how we navigated it. But that you really just yeah, that was a strange flirting. Technique. If it would have been one of the the salted billionaire caramel Maybe. ones, would have been different. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, okay. but yeah, that was not. No, that is brilliant. The mag- I've, I may have to use that one. Yeah. See if it, well, works. it didn't work. Well, it didn't work. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> that is but brilliant. The, you get some other people as well, though, who I think this is the difference. Like some women, you go out, I'm sure you've seen, and both women and men, by the way, who are literally like a tramp on chips. Like they'll just jump on you like just want to like fucking you said a tramp on chips <laughs> ben no ben that really comes mate, out amazing. you know what I'm talking about I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about but wow ben comes then, out with some real but then statements. that takes away from like a bit of the chase the conversation the the kind of eye contact the body language yeah. the the bit of like the, the game that uh, there's a game there always is like a, a game of give and take people finding out things as well of course and that takes away all of that and it's like I think for a lot of people they're kind of like oh well I know I've got easy access to that so it's like it's less well, endearing. I think it depends on like you, what you just said. You said like when you guys met, you as soon as you met him, you had that amazing chemistry and there was something really, really powerful. That is different to meeting someone and then not having that instant chemistry in, in, in you know, your conversation and then hooking up on the first night. Mm-hmm. I think it does change little things. Like if you, it takes, I think for a guy it would take away the maybe feeling about this could be something more because if you're just having a, you had a date the date was all right and then she lets you back in then you're like uh okay not maybe over it but when you have that amazing chemistry with someone and then you if you hook up on the first night it can change i think a little bit of like how you treat the situation and and thinking in your head is there more to this mm-hmm. for sure <laughs> how sorry this is a kind of off topic but i know you said it before about just like kids and marriage and future mm. How soon is too soon to have the conversation with the girl you really like that you want that you want kids and you want to get married one day? Uh, never too soon. How? What's okay? What's like uh, the early should soon, go in? Yeah, to say like not for not first date. I I think it depends on where you are in your life. Okay. I think if a on the first date if a girl says that to me. It depends how she says it as well. It's like, <laughs> by the way, I really want kids. Um, you look That's like you fit intense. the mold. Yeah. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. But if, if we're talking about, you know, naturally on the first day, you talk about exes, yeah. you talk about relationships, you talk about how you are and like who you've dated and, and, and then it will go on like, do you want kids? Like that, that sort of on the first date, 100%. Like, yeah, 100%, I want kids. or And it's good to know. Like if on the first date, a girl says to me, I don't want kids. Cool. I'm, I won't see you because I want kids. Yeah. yeah. Like unless she says, 
right now I don't want kids, but I, I see kids in my future, 100%. I think it's, and again, these conversations, if you're having them when you're like in your early 20s, for men and women are different. Obviously women mature a lot quicker than mm -hmm. men. I think that will scale from a man a lot more. Yeah. But I think also if a guy is honest with girls and say, look, that is something that I definitely want maybe in 10 years time, depending on how old he is, or in six years time or whatever. But I wanna let you know that I wanna take care of you and I have gotta work on myself to get to that position when when we do have kids, we're set up for life mm -hmm. and we're ready. Mm -hmm. And I think women need to respect that and understand that more because I think women are like, I want kids, I want kids. And that happened with my ex. She's like, I want, when I was 21, we, we were trying to have a kid and I was nowhere near, I was still a tailor at Reese and I was trying to figure out my life and it was like, I want kids. And it's like, how can I have a kid when I'm not, I can't even take care of myself right now. Mm -hmm. And I think, and that takes responsibility to the outset as well. Yeah. And I think we shy away in dating now of being just honest. Like I'm talking to someone at the moment and I've just laid everything down on the, the ground. And I was like, it's a apart risk. From, apart from the A4 paper. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was a risk in my head. I was like, this could be a huge risk. My mates were like, oh, maybe you shouldn't say everything. I was like, yeah, but I, well, I've got nothing to do. And it's been the most insane response back. Like she was like, just given exactly the same what I was given in, in, in that emotion. So I think it's important to be like really honest. Yeah, I think it's the best thing to do. I think honestly, we first or second time, we were like, we went on a date. I mean, our dates were all a bit weird. We just random stuff together, didn't we? I was just like, he's the one. Love kids. <laughs> Love as long, I think kids. as long as you're not turning up like the deck collector with the fucking clipboard and like, yeah, take like check no, out your box. But I'm the same. If if I started dating someone like we, like we just had this great connection, I'm thinking right. And also, we were kind of like we we needed to not be with other people, and it was all so it, he was like going to be the one. I mean, I was only 21 and Ben was 26, mm. but I was just like, just do, do you see kids in your future because I see kids and marriage, and that's. Mm. I, that is it I, I want that but and then luckily Ben did yeah amazing and we were we were very very open about it straight away I think it's still scary I mean, like to a point like even talking about it when I was a couple of years ago like I think yeah, you got like yeah. ready to properly yeah you were but it's still, of course it's still even to the day like today you, you that conversation is um f I think for guys is it is a scary thing like to be ready to have that um I think women are naturally you know, we're very more maternal, yeah, 100%. And I think that's you kind of know you're just going to be ready and you can take care and, and, and do all of that. And I think for a guy, it's, it's a big question. As much as he wants it, it's when it happens, it's like, oh my God, I am a dad now. Yeah. Mm. And that's a big thing. And that's a big, big title. And like, that, even like when I've been thinking about it, and because I think, I think I go as far as to say, like, we're quite traditional. Like, I need to be ready in terms of, like, I want to feel like, I can provide and provide. I can 100%. be a good leader, a good dad, a good, like, I can support you, look after you. Like, I'm quite traditional, like, in those kind you of things. You also wanted to get married before kids. Yeah, and that I wanted to get married before kids. Like, I think I'm very traditional in my, my, my thinking. So I, I want to be ready in terms of, like, I feel ready to to kind of be the man that I need to be. Yeah. To be able to, but I'm, to I, do that. I'll, I, I wasn't ready to have kids a couple of years ago. I knew I wanted them. No way ready. My job is fitness, running. I won't be able to, it's going to have to die. Yeah. It's quite a big thing for me. Like everything, my training changes. Oh my God, I can't run as much or I can't, that makes me feel good. I'm not going to be able to do it. Yeah. There's so many questions that I had with Ben thinking. I don't even think, how do I have a kid? Like, how yeah. do I do it? Whereas now we know like, okay, like end of this year, we'll start trying and that's. Is that what you're doing end of this year? Yeah. Woo! Fingers crossed. Ben's but like, we've only no, just. Are oh, we? It's never happening. Oh, God. <laughs> so, right, it's still got nine months of the baby to come. <laughs> um, but that's only now, like five, yeah. six years later, we're kind of like, okay, I think, mm. I think we're ready now. So it's not, but I think it's a very, very important conversation to have. And just, as you said, you're now dating someone. This is me, like everything. So yeah. you can't find out anything, no matter what comes out in like, for you as well, if something came out on TV or the papers or social media, I've already told you. Yeah. So all your cards are on the table, like take it or leave it. And obviously yeah. she's taking it. Yeah. Well, hopefully well, she's taking it. Cross fingers. We'll yeah. see what happens with that. Uncancelable man. <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's, yeah, the kids thing is uh, is crazy for a guy and in the, in the relationship, it's, it's so important to know, to know all of that. Mm. Obviously as a very successful male in the, the dating game and then in the in the sex game I, I we were looking at these odds the other day like 
a third of men, I think like obviously over the age of, I've been over the age of 18, haven't had sex. How like, how can they change that odds of their like going out there? Because we were having this conversation just before with Ian there, is that like, I think there's a space at the moment where a lot of men are nervous or scared to say things because of like we spoke about before, the cancel culture, or, like being recorded in gyms, like a weirdo or like, overstepping the mark or the boundaries of what you should be saying because i think like a minority of men like perverts horrible people like dark people who rape like yeah. manipulate women have created like this barrier that's gone up for a lot of women yeah of course. because the majority of men are good men who like want to yeah. find a partner but like for those guys they now suffer because of the consequences of the other then then i found it even difficult to approach women or speak yeah. to women like how can we change those odds like what would your approach be to try and break down those barriers um, I think as uh, a young male, like, you know, you're in your teens and you're discovering yourself and you're discovering your own sexuality and like, you know, trying to approach women, um, everything like that. You've just got to be really like, ignore everything that's going around, all the noise. Like it's easy to fall into boys banter and lad chat and, you know, look at social media and, you know, uh, these people out and people for certain behaviors and all that. You've got to trust your education from your family and you've got to trust what is right and good. Mm. Okay. And you normally, you, you're right. You know, if you feel like that something's wrong in your gut, then it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And then the biggest thing I've, I think people need to learn is put your hands up when you're wrong. When you're wrong. Like if you've yeah. overstepped your mark, if you're looking at a girl in the gym too long and she comes up to you and she said, you know, you're freaking me out. Be, I'm really, really sorry. I think you're beautiful. And I just, I actually overstepped. I'm really, yeah. really sorry. Like just own up because then you're learning about yourself and you're learning as you grow up, mm -hmm. you know, I'm still learning today, mm -hmm. loads of things. And I love that. I love that I'm learning. I, lo I, I know, I love the fact that I know I'm not perfect in every single way. Um, and oh, oh, loads of people think, oh, I'm on the dating expert and I'm, I, you know, I get loads of guys and everything. That's what TV will show you. Yeah. And uh, I was very lucky enough to, to learn from my father and teach me the right ways and and be respectful and be a gentleman like there's certain little things that men can do that forget um that i think nowadays people guys are ex you know they think they expect to do these grand gestures all the time to impress a girl i'm like there are so many simple things mm -hmm. that you can do that will they may not say it but they'll think oh my god that that guy just did that so mm -hmm. one for example something i always do when you're walking on the road on the street make sure you're walking noticeably take her on the other side mm. uh and you're on the car side on the road and you show that you're protecting her it's a small thing you don't say anything you just as you're talking down the road and you talk, mm. take on the side she'll go oh what it's like no i'm just in case you know the car crashes car it hits me first yeah. and then not you those small little things will impact a girl so much and be like oh my god he's so caring he's a gentleman and i'm traditional like you like i'm gonna hold a door for a mm. girl and i'm the, there's so many different things and I think we we're so scared now to to like oh my god is am I supposed to be doing this? Am Sexist. I, yeah, exactly. Is it, are we equal? Mm. Like, just forget all of that. It's a big topic at the moment, a hundred percent. But do what you think is good, and also believe for yourself. Like if a girl doesn't like that stuff, and she's like, no, no, no I'm the boss girl. I'm doing. I I can pay for my. Say goodbye. Mm -hmm. If that's not what your belief is, if you like a girl like that, hundred percent go yeah. for it. But do what you think is right. And I think owning up to things and being as respectful as you can. And you, look, let's not be stupid. You know when you're on the wrong. If you've done something that's weird or you, mm -hmm. you've done something that's inappropriate, you know it, just own it and then and learn yeah. from it. And then the thing that's harmful about like so many of these conversations recently is like it almost creates a, a, a bigger like segregation and division between men and women, like mm -hmm. when we should be doing the opposite. And you can use my, minority cases, which again, create that fric friction that isn't really there. But then those conversations that are in the echo chambers then create that feeling of like it's men versus women when it's not. That's the majority of time. Like it's supporting each other. Of course. To, to be better in society in general. I think I think we just need to realize men and women are different. Men have certain roles, women have certain roles. Th that's that's what it is. And we complement each other at the end of the day, and it's great. And the more we're trying to fight it, the more there's gonna be a huge divide and there's yeah. the more it's just gonna suck for everyone well, that's one of my favorite clips is from jordan peterson where you're talking about like i think there's someone challenging on how the like engineering space is yep. like 
sexist and he was just expl- explaining it simply as that like women tend to favor being like more nurturing like women women are more people people and men are more problem solvers yeah and engineering is problem solving so yeah. that's why more men tend to be good at that and why women tend to take up jobs like nursing and care and yeah and those are the kind of roles it's not because it's sexist it's because that divide is quite natural and yeah. innate and, and I, I i also think like what's the problem with that like also sometimes uh i was talking to my who was i talking about this to recently um I think it was my sister or something like that. And it's super interesting because people were like, oh, you know, the the gender gap or the pay, like, you know, men get paid more on this and all that. And I'm like, I'm in an industry where women make way more money than me. And I'm in an industry where women accomplish and are way more successful than me and will always be like that. Yeah. I can work five years in TV reality, do Instagram, do thing, and a girl can come on the show and just destroy me. Mm-hmm. Because in my industry, in this industry, women do better than men. Mm-hmm. I don't complain about it. I just understand that's the case. And it just make, drives me to work harder in what I'm doing and find a different avenue that I can create. Women have makeup, fashion, way more things available to them in social media and influencing than guys. Their following can grow way quicker because mm-hmm. guys like to follow women and women, f- girls are girls, girls. They love yeah. each other. They support each other. You know, there are so many fitness influencers, so many women who are majority doing very similar things, mm-hmm. but it's about the connection they have and they the way they talk about things. And some people will talk about more, you know, uh, bodies uh, and, and you know, like how to not be so focused on bodies and dysmorphia stuff and yeah. all that. Or some women are like, you know, train hard or it depends what they, and it, every girl has a, like their opportunity there. Whereas men, it's so much harder. And I find that interesting because in, and more and more social media and influencing, people want to do that as a job now which mm-hmm. i find crazy mm-hmm. um and it's it's the 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 gender role has actually switched it's like women do way better than men yeah but no one talks about that either well yeah the, the, i think women like in general like in education in in jobs like in a lot of those aspects that they didn't do before women are like excelling and i think it's men that are struggling a lot in education workspace and other yeah. things as well especially like when it comes to mental health and that's maybe part of why that mental health crisis there because men aren't doing as well in society anymore do you know what as well with your partner which is really interesting what you were just saying before um because ben is really traditional like he does all that he offers this he offers that he walks on that side of the road like my mom and dad did that as well and <clears> i do that for my i would do that for my kids yeah um but then i think so one thing we did like really early on is like look our love languages and like the different things and how you actually connect with your partner so one of my love languages is gift giving how interesting i I love giving gifts. I will buy, but I just love, I absolutely Happy love to it. Happy receive all day. And his, yeah. right. his is like <laughs> gift receiving. And Ben likes physical touch and words of affirmation where I'm I'm not physical, I like more words of affirmation or time, like spend yeah. time with me and understand. So when it did get to things like who's paying the bill, I'm like, I'm not split it or I'll get it. I, that's just the type of person yeah, of that course. I am. But at the start, it wasn't necessarily like that because we hadn't had that conversation. But yeah. eventually I was like, well, you're not fucking paying. Like, we'll just split it. Yeah. Whereas I think some girls will always expect a guy to pay, which is fine if that's them. But it, I think it gets to a certain point where it's nice to offer and nice to split it. You know what? This is a conversation that we just had with my boys. We were all talking about, my mate was going, he went on six dates with this girl. And every time the bill came, she would like either look away, start a conversation, wouldn't say anything. And we know as men, we're always going to pay, right? It's like, I'm going to pay regardless. But if you don't offer... I don't like that at all. Like just being like, you know, we've taken you out. We've had a great conversation. Like just like off, like, oh, can we, uh, let's split. It's like, no, 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 I've invited you out. Mm-hmm. Like my my rule with like that sort of thing with the pay in, uh, paying the bill is if I asked you out, I'm paying. If you want to take me somewhere, 100%, mm-hmm. like it's up to you then. Mm-hmm. Like I remember I took this girl out. We went for dinner, drinks. I bought everything, you know, dinner and I went to a bar. I bought, it was my thing. So I said, I want to take you out this time, this day and all this. And then she asked, she was like, oh, should we go see a movie? I was like, I'm super keen to see this movie. Let's do it on this day. So it was kind of like a, we mutually arranged it. Mm-hmm. But then I got some drinks. It was like, you know, uh, the every man's in my, so you can sit down on the couch yeah. and drink. So we had some few drinks and she got up to go to the toilet and she was like, oh, I'm going to get some drinks. I was like, oh, I'll take my card. She said, no, 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 don't worry, I'll get everything. And she got like drinks, popcorn and extra things. I was like, that's so nice mm. because you've just added into 
this is a mutual thing yeah. like that's epic yeah. girls do that learn from that please because it's so nice because if you're just ignoring and expecting it's just so unattractive i just think it's a bit rude yeah why the fuck are you expecting him to pay mm. on our first date i was like split mm. First day, like two, we split in it. Like yeah. I put my card down and Ben's like, no, 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 I'll get this. I think the guy should pay for the fir- for the first one. Like it's yeah. I see. I mean, I don't even agree with that. But that's I'm just I was I would always offer to I, pay. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I think it goes back to also making a man feel like he's a man. Yeah, I think yeah, that's what it's I mean, more about. You, you it's not. Pay. It's not about, it's it's like not about a, the yeah. money. Yeah. It's like I don't care. No, you, it's, I'd it's rather just, fucking yeah. pay. It's like the pride thing. It's, I think. for men. It's a hundred percent like I'm the man. I'm taking you out. Like you want to show off. So you're like, I'll pay the bill. It's all good. Like. You know, I'll sometimes go if she goes to the toilet. I'll pay it before she's even yeah. there, and then come back and like yeah. we lay like that. That's what a man wants to do. So, but I think also from you, epic. If you offer mm-hmm. and you want to say, I want to split. Maybe it's from like I would never want someone to think I'm just like using them to get like free shit yeah. out of them. It's always just offer, and then and then work it out. I just, yeah, I mean, you don't get to the sixth date, and then the guy's been paying the whole time, and then you're just a bit. You can't expect that of people. A hundred percent. I just think that's and that wrong this girl, perception. poor, poor my mate, like <laughs> she, uh, she, they went on six dates and then after ghosted him, completely ghosted him for like, and then should have written an invoice, been like, just all, all <laughs> by the, the way, dinners. you owe me yeah. all of this. Yeah, honestly, it's me. terrible. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, that'd be really off putting for me. Yeah. But the same again for me. I would not in any sense be off put if I I was paying for everything. That yeah. wouldn't. But I think for the other side that might be off-putting for them whereas i'd be like I'll, yeah i'll pay like no well, problem i i've been in a relationship like that where my i was 19 when i met my first girlfriend she was 23 she was older than me um she was way richer than me she had a very wealthy background um and in the beginning it was like she wanted to do all these things and i was like i can't yeah i've literally just i moved out of my parents house last year like how am i supposed to do this and it was really really stressful because like i wanted to provide i want to do so much so early on and i think this is why i'm the way i'm today i'm so grateful for that relationship because i had to grow up really quickly Mm -hmm. really rapidly but um it is tough for men to like accept that Mm. just because it's like again especially if you come from a traditional background you're seeing your father take care of everything you then you you grow up to being like that's my job now and i need to do that so when the roles reserve reserve reverse sorry you kind of get a bit like uh how do I, how do I get, how do I do this? Because mm. I, it shouldn't be like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's, there's definitely examples of stuff like that where I think even in sport, the, the, the Ronda Rousey one that I gave you, yeah. like a reporter asked her a question. She was like, what do you think about the uh, like kind of inequality in women's pay in sport? And she was like, I don't see it because like I get paid for the numbers that turn up and like UFC pay me what I deserve because I pull in big fucking numbers. I get big numbers and yeah, that's the way it works. It makes sense. Yeah. Like it's it, I, it's hard because I, I obviously there's the, the argument of like, we train as hard as men and they do a hundred percent. Like, but the thing is, is like, if you look at football, stadiums are empty when women's football are playing. Like there'll be a small percentage of people watching that football match. And as much as I would want more people to watch it and, you know, have a bigger audience for it, you have to accept that if they don't bring money to that stadium, how do you expect to pay your footballers the well, same if, if all the men. feminists went and sat in the stadium, then it'd probably be a different story. 100%. That's why I say they, all these girls, oh, it's so funny. You see all these like videos, these clips on TikTok and it's like, yeah, well, we need to be more on this and in sports and there's a huge difference. And I'm like, okay, when's the last time you went to see a football match, a women's football match or an NBA or WBA, sorry, or like a, a women's cricket or like, when have you done that? And yeah. if you ha- start doing that and then we can talk about it. Yeah. But until you do that, you can't, Sla- yeah, you know, yeah. say anything about the men's football, you know men's category and, and how they get paid it's just yeah it's bonkers to me yeah I think- do do the things that you deserve to, to get i mean it's always a weird one for me because i'm very much like women in sport but mm. mine's also like from a young age introduce young girls to sport like i was introduced like sport changed my whole life like so grateful for it i don't watch football in any sense. Yeah. I don't watch women or men because I don't really enjoy it. Like Ben watches football. I just don't really care for it. It's not a good time. No, I don't no, really no. watch rugby. Like I watch athletics, CrossFit, swimming, CrossFit. fitness stuff. And they're quite equal pay. The, like the sports that I love well, to watch. Like, CrossFit, CrossFit is 310,000 per. Yes. Because how you know wild what? is that? I actually sometimes 
prefer watching the women because I'm like, are you, yeah. these women are so strong yeah. and they do these crazy, the stadiums are filled, everyone's yelling at them. Like they're all these, all, all the CrossFitters are like got two, three million plus followers. There's a huge community and that's deserving because they mm. are bringing that audience. Yeah, so yeah. it makes sense. And those, I'm the same. I don't watch football or anything. I'm not like a typical lad lad, but like I love watching CrossFit and athletics, all that kind of stuff. And you, there's no... There's no problem there. It's equal there. Yeah, mm. I watch the guys. I mean, I'm a woman, but I watch the guys just as much as I watch the girls, but yeah. I support those sports because they're the ones that I watch. Like, I don't care for football, so I yeah. don't. But it, it is hard because I do want the women's football. Like, I mean, the women's England team just won and they've done amazing yeah, things for women's great. football. So that's fucking fantastic and it probably will help like massively. But I'm definitely like women in sport from a young age like give young girls if they 100%. want to play football let them play football if of course the boys want to do gymnastics let the boys do gymnastics i'm very much equal in terms of give them both the opportunity and then they can go off and do, do you know there's like a, a male and a female bricklayer though and like one of them was worse off one of them would be worse paid so if you've got two football players one's a female one's a male why would they not be different in pay what so you've got two bricklayers one's yeah. a one one's a man yeah they will be bit paid best on like based on who is best at the job yeah so if you had a female and a male football player why would it not be the same because if, if the woman's team played the men's team it'd be like 10 20 nil it's not the same level of skill but naturally naturally scientifically guys are stronger I, so this is my issue it doesn't mean that the women aren't as good for the women's football team for england won the world cup the guys didn't win so yeah, does that not technically make it, the girls better? If they played each other though, like if you look yeah, at- Yeah, but they wouldn't play each other because we're so scientifically different. I know. You're I, not I, gonna I, run me against I hun- an athletics I 100% man. agree with what you're saying, but at the same time, like it doesn't matter what sport it is. People like watching whoever is the best. Like I love watching women's gymnastics because I think like the women are way better and way more talented and move better than the men. Yeah. So oh, no, I do thing. agree with and that. And that's why I prefer watching men's football because it's like the highest level of that sport. I've yeah. got no like, it's not because like women- a women that's why i'm not watching it and men are men like i pref- if there's a sport like a women are better at i would just prefer to watch the women's team because they are the best in the world at that 100%. same with like some of the crossfit and then the same with men like i think humans innately just like watching whoever whoever's the top 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 of that sport in the world well that's what i mean regarding the women's lioness team they got so much coverage mm. because they were the best at the, that moment. The only thing I'll say about women's football, which is like, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't love football in any sense. It's yeah, hard for me to the, use that as an example. The only thing of women's but... football, which is bad, is, and this is like one of the reasons why I also think it's quite far behind men's football, is because women weren't allowed to even play football until like the 1950s. And it's so late. So yeah, like, and really it's really late. So obviously, women's football is going to be way behind in terms of development, the, the crowds, the stadiums, the sponsorships, and maybe like in another hundred years' time, women's football may be way further along that scale. And I think it yeah. won. And it, st- it started already, like you said. Like they won, they won the the World Cup. So if, like that's gonna that's gonna really help push. And it's also gonna make a lot of young women wanting to like maybe go into that. Um, and it's changing. Like it's uh, that aspect is changing. And I think I hope it does for everyone to that that you know the audience are more interested in watching female sports. That's mm. that's great if that happens. But currently that is not the case. Mm. And I think that's why the struggle of like everyone being like, yeah, women need to pay be paid the same it's like it's just not there yet until you have the audience it's just not there but it's even like with tennis i don't watch the guys i watch i watch the women's tennis i watch i watch both i yeah. think it's great so that so that doesn't make me because, like oh but, god but do you know why it's just though, i love going back to your saying like you know i can't remember she said this like who's men and women are stronger and men are stronger than women naturally like when you look at a sport where they're both equal sort of like crossfit yeah like tennis like watching a tennis match fucking fast serena williams like it's she intense is insane. right when you watch football it's slow yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just slow and you watch it you go wow it's not i don't want to watch this i want to see fast pace i want to see the best of the best and that's what's that's what's great right so yeah. that just that needs to people need to understand that that's the change yeah i think like even with that like you you were talking about um the serena yeah, one of the highest serena female williams sports is the but like, and then the Highest argument with that is like, athlete. in terms of like, yeah, Wimbledon all have the tickets, but it's where the TV TV viewership's at. And like, again, like, are they both doing an equal job? I don't know. Like men have got to play five sets. Women have got to play three sets. Like, No, I think yeah, we, true, we yeah. will always have, I'm a woman in sport, in the fitness industry, grew up in sport, got paid less for swimming. I have kind of seen it and been there. I didn't work any less hard. I just wasn't as good. Like, fair enough. I yeah. can completely appreciate it. 
but mine's just more so I want as many women as possible in the whole world, young little girls, to just do sport. Yeah, like, I, that's, where I'm at. I, that's I, where I'm I at. I think we all, all three of us, are on the same place. That like we're all for equality, but I don't want there just to be equality for the reason of being equality. Like the quality yeah. of opportunity, yeah, equality of outcome. No, like the, mm-hmm. the, not everything needs to be equal. And a lot of those pay gaps don't just come down to gender. Like they're multifaceted, and where there's way more than just gender that's at play to why the, the pay differences. I would say just on that that CrossFit one as well, it wouldn't even surprise me if people watch the women more because it's so impressive. It's like, in like Tia Claire, Tia, I'm like Tia Clumi. She like, Tia Claire, sorry, <laughs> she's she's got a kid now as well. Yeah, she's pregnant. She smashed it five. On, one, so on that five. wouldn't like the way as in like they are the fittest people in the world. Like it's mesmerizing, and I love watching those women. And you do. I think it's like the gymnastics. Like we were training with Amy Kringle yesterday, and like she's just fucking so an animal. Strong. She's Amy so Kringle, strong. yeah, yeah. She's yeah. like doing cross it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, she's so strong. Animal, mate. She was doing like so. She had like an emon for muscle ups, and us three are just like. We were doing chin ups. We just do chin ups, and she was like out maxing us on ring muscle ups, yeah. and we were like, yeah, doing the pull ups. Yeah. Physi- I was like. I was like, this is a joke. Yeah. Like, it's mad. Yeah. That that sort of training as well is just like... Gotta be an animal. Gotta be tough, mate. Like, yeah. we've got... Uh, so we we had Jay on our podcast. I don't know if you know Jay Younger from Love Island last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's doing CrossFit at the moment. And I've just never seen... Me and Charlie were like, we should do CrossFit because our physiques should change now. Because it's so dense, aren't they? It's dense and it's thick. Yeah. And it's like... And they're always... They're always lean. Yeah. They're yeah. always lean. It's crazy. Like they skip and nothing, mo- like n- they're just like solid Do you skipping. know what the thing is? Like, I did CrossFit for like 12 months and it's great. But then like some Monday mornings I turn up and like look at this work and I'm like, I just want to bang chest and arms. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, <laughs> I, I, I think it's just like, that sort of workout. I love bodybuilding style training, yeah. I guess. That's what I do. Um, I love it. Like yeah. I don't get bored of it. And CrossFit, like I tried and I've, I'm going to do more because I think I want to be more functional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But looking at those workouts not fun and especially if you've got a bit like my job is not to do fitness my job is not to be in fitness i love fitness and i want to take care of myself and i want to look good right so me doing that cross style training does not work in my world and my life because it's so intense super draining and i won't be able to do my day-to-day work high fatigue yeah i'd be like literally when i did a i did a triathlon and i trained for six weeks for it and I mean, I was the leanest I've ever been. Like I looked sick, it was great. I'm like, damn, I can look like this all the time. But I was so skinny as well. I was like, I was like 70 kilos at the time. Um, and then, but the training I had to do, I had to train twice a day. I had these refeed days and it is crazy. And I was like, lucky enough at that time, I wasn't filming or doing anything. I was like, how could I ever do this style of training if I had a normal job or if I was on set all the time? You're dead, you can't do yeah. it. it I, would, I remember being like, by four or five p.m., I would want. I'd be napping. I'd be so tired. Mm. It takes all your exhaustion out. It's crazy. That's like I. I respect. That's why I love CrossFit. I fucking love watching yeah, it. Yeah, It's such a good. Or it hypes me up. Also, if I want to go to the gym, yeah. Just watch Rich Rich thrown in or Matt yeah. Fraser. Literally. And I'm just like, let's fucking go. Yeah, <laughs> like, the, the pinnacle of fucking Goggins. Like, <sighs> yeah. Let's yeah. Just, before, just, yeah. Use them as inspiration. Mm. I, think that's the, as I think inspiration. that's a good thing. Is like inspiration, not imitation, because a lot of people will look at like men's health or other things and looking at these really unrealistic bodies and think, I need to just be like that. Yeah. And I think as you get older and mature, it's like what you value is way different and you realize, okay, not that many people actually are sort of look like a Greek god as opposed to like having a bit of balance and a good life. Oh, hundred percent. Like we, I was talking to my coach now um, and he's like, he's a powerlifter. I mean, he's like in stupid, ridiculous physique. Like it's unbelievable. Um, and he was like, yeah, I'm just going to get bigger now. I'm like, oh, you know, I need to work on the trot. I'm like, bro, you're, he's cut. He's <laughs> yeah. huge. He lifts 335 kilos on deadlift. He's a fucking tank, yeah. right? Um, he's a GB athlete. So like, he, yeah, yeah. that's his job. Um, and he looks insane. He looks insane. And he's like, I'm, big. I'm like, bro, you, you get bigger. There's no point. Yeah. There's no point. And he's quite short. So I'm like, if you get just wide and small, like it doesn't look good. Um, but anyway, it's his own problems. Uh, but I was like, we, we were talking about it, but it's interesting because we're like, we're doing it for ourselves. Mm. Like I'm currently, <laughs> I'm cutting right now. It's my third day cutting, starving. <laughs> um, I'm so hungry. Uh, and uh, I, I love Carrie Carlson. A lot of people hate it. I love it because it it gives me discipline in my other disciplines. So it makes me aware of what I'm doing and yeah. what I'm eating. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand it's not for everyone, uh, but I'm doing it purely for a girl, right? I'm I'm literally traveling to see this this girl that I'm like kind of sort of dating. 
Uh, and we were talking yesterday and she, I was like, yeah, this is like, I'm cutting, don't worry. And she was like, let me see. I'm like, I'm not showing you my, t- I'm not getting naked right now. Yeah. Show, please show me. And I was like, no. And I, she, I was like, oh, I'll show you a video of like what I kind of look like at the moment. So I was like on my Instagram and she was like, you look amazing. In my head, I'm like, what? Like I'm fluffy. I'm in, like, I'm not defined. I do not look good here. And she was like, I love it. Like, I love that the way you look cause you're big and all that. And I was like, what? And in my head, I'm like, it's crazy that what we think as men being cut and diced is what women want, but a lot of women don't. Well, it's, it's well like I did a, I, me and Carl last week went out and did like a YouTube video on like walk the streets of Chester, did some interviewing with like different women. And like nine, I was showing like dad bod. So one was dad bod, one was like a mega like men's health kind yeah. of chiseled dude, big chest abs. And na- over 90% of the women actually preferred the dad bod mm. for like lots of different reasons, such as like one, it would make me feel like more insecure about my body yeah that's true the, the, the other thing is like they think oh they must be like addicted to the gym and they wouldn't have time for for much else what are some of the other reasons carl that was mainly it wasn't it yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Cal's, so Cal's like Cal's I don't want to Cal's, Cal's like oh Jamie's like when we need to check so status cool. of Cal Young just Cal. swoops in. I yeah, love that. that. I need to bring that into my yeah. idea. Yeah, it that's seemed good. to be like a lot of people just talking about how they didn't want to like um feel bad if they were having like a pizza and then he was just like smashing yeah. chicken and rice. It's not the same rice, though. same yeah. vibe, you know. It is yeah. a nice standard meal. But yeah, a lot of lot of women prefer that. Like I think a lot of men like put this unrealistic expectations on themselves and i think men value what they look like more than women actually mm. do and i think if they knew those kind of things they maybe wouldn't go to those lengths and i also think that men put those expectations on themselves because as men we value attractiveness higher than what women do so we're gonna but i think also what's nice about that it's um it's growing through fitness like what i used to do and how i used to train and how i train now is so vastly different and so much healthier now that we had a, someone asked me, it's like, um, you know, is it too intense that I'm doing this sort of training, calorie counting and all this and all that. And they're like, you know, in their twenties, I was like, no, do it. I think almost being unhealthy in a certain way, not that it causes mental health. I learned so much trying to be as ripped as I could when I was, you know, 22, 23, trying to like get into the fitness uh, industry that now I've learned so much about myself, about my body, what I don't care about anymore, like the way I train and not having this ego with other people in the gym. Like my Charlie, he's six two, he's ripped to shreds. Even when he's like, Oh, I'm like a bit yeah. too flat. I'm like, I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm, really, I'm like, yeah, sure. Mate, how do you think I feel every fucking day? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, you're shredded. I do. You are shredded. I, am, oh, I think I have been since about five years old. But that also that because you're you've been an athlete since, since I a was young like, age, yeah. that's just that's just, just me. Genetics. You're gonna burn fat really, really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Like I started training when I was 22, yeah. so I for for me putting on fat is super easy. Yeah, so, yeah. Losing fat takes a lot more time, but that's what I'm saying. Like so, when you know people are trying, to, they they they're starting to train and trying to get into shape. I'm like, do the extreme first. Learn about your body. Learn to see what goes on with it. And as the years go on, you just discover this whole new way of training, understanding of it. Um, you know, getting a, maybe a coach on or nutritionist or learn, listen to podcasts about things. You know, the biggest thing I've learned in the last years, sleep, recovery, mm-hmm. how important, it doesn't matter how many hours I train in the in the gym. If I don't get eight hours of sleep, I look like shit. Yeah. yeah. So, and then you learn a bit. Th- and also it works for different people. Some people look so great, even with five hours sleep, you the the whole there's one method for all it kind of exists yes because if you train any certain coach or program you will get in shape naturally but at the same time uh you've got to learn about your own body and once you've learned about your own body you can reach your own new heights mm-hmm. which is amazing i put a, like a really simplified tweet about this the other day it's like most people will get into the gym because of how it makes them look but most people will carry on because of how it makes them feel yeah and that's what you just talked about then because you most people start because like right, i want to look good whether it's for a girl whether yeah. it's for a holiday whether it's to like look better naked in the mirror yeah but then you realize like i actually feel good from doing this and you carry on continuously oh, doing man. It. training is like i love it so much like even if i if i haven't got time i've only got half an hour there whatever just doing sprints or lifting heavy weights or anything and 
also when you're in a gym and you're part of a, like a group of people who everyone knows each other and you're chatting it's like what people are you doing here it's just like the culture i love i think mm -hmm. it's amazing and it for men i don't i can't speak for women a lot for but with my boys like the mental health aspect and how it saves all of us it, like it saved me for sure mm -hmm. like i would i would be in a very different spot right now if i didn't if i didn't train and in what, in, in, if you don't mind me asking in what way um so when i was i started chelsea when i was 22 21 22 um and i was a party boy going out uh doing all sorts of things and it got to a point where first of all i never looked at my body and said i was out of shape i uh, that was never a concept for me mm -hmm. so when i was looking in the mirror i never looked at myself as like, oh i'm out of shape or training whatever i just because i was like skinny fat so it's i didn't really scubby. Yeah, I didn't really see much. I was just like, whatever, I want to party, I want to go out. And that was my thing, it was like just being a socialite. And then I was having the worst anxiety because of alcohol, drugs, and all this sort of thing. And I remember being in my room and going, calling my manager and be like, if, if I don't change my lifestyle, I'll be in a ditch right now. Mm -hmm. I will, I won't, I won't be, I won't be alive with the way it's going it was early so it wasn't like i was doing it for years yeah it was very early on and i was like if i don't do anything and my manager at the time got me into contact with this person who was you know uh in, in very much into his fitness and trained me and i started wanting to do boxing that's all i wanted to do i just wanted to box and then he was like try weights and i did like a bicep car and i was like this feels nice yeah <laughs> i was like this is sick and then i did three months stop smoking stop drinking something like cut everything did a transformation leaned out looked great and then i fell in love with it and i was like this is amazing and mentally it saved me like 100 percent. yeah i 100 percent agree i think like this is like where there's an argument of like where people come extreme with it where like it can take over from being something that you're dedicated to to being something that's detrimental to people's health and like yeah. then, then that like you were speaking about before about calorie counts and there's an, there's an argument all the time about like is it people who are prone to disorderly eating that then um, use my fitness pal, or is it my fitness pal that leads to people having disorderly eating? And there's like, yeah. yeah, maybe there's correlation there, but we don't know what the causation is to why yeah. and which way around it is. So that's why I think like for majority of people, like calorie counting is a really useful tool to teach you a lot about nutrition. And you get to the point where like, it'll educate you to a point where you can just eyeball shit. You don't need to do yeah. it all the time. You can take away that crutch and not, not have to use it. It's not something that you, need to have for the rest of your life and i think that's what people get confused with oh 100 like you i i did it funny enough when i did my first cut never tracked i did it for my recent cut when i was going to bali for filming and i knew they wanted my top of all the bloody time so i was like okay and i have a nutritionist who's a friend luckily enough so he was just helping me out i, I didn't know. think about that you must have that extra pressure of like coming to film and you're like shit i need to be in shape mm -hmm. oh all the time i'm like you have to be like your face needs to look gaunt you look you know you have to look good on camera that's that's the whole point so all the time you're thinking okay i need to you know especially if we go on the trips away and all that um it's you know going before going to bali i did a five week cut um so intense like it was it was the first time i really started calorie, calorie counting and doing it properly mm -hmm. i learned so much about it like i was i loved going in the supermarket and scanning yeah. and like oh that's 40 grams that's amazing <laughs> you know like always and and also it's just created a habit of like when i don't count i kind of know what i want for my breakfast i know how much protein there's in that breakfast and yeah. then i don't have to but it, like you said it's a tool so mm -hmm. you do it for you'll do it every now and again if you've got a shoot if you've got a cut it, it again i'm speaking as someone who is in the industry where i've got to do social media i do photo shoots i've mm -hmm. got to do that so i every now and again i have to do that but it, it's taught me so much about food and what's good and what's healthy and also it's taught me that all this basic food is great food for yeah. you like we overcomplicate and make you know these amazing dishes with loads of sauce but it's so bad for you like all these msgs and things and that bloat you and there's loads of reasons a lot of people who have problems with their bodies and bloatness or whatever it is, is because of food and they don't understand what's in it. And as soon as you understand that, it's honestly, you're, it's amazing. It changes can I, everything. Can I ask if you still drink? Yeah. But not as much as you did? Nowhere near as much as I did. Like nowhere near. Do what's you, your relationship like with alcohol, sorry? Um, it goes, it fluctuates. Like I'll have 
generally when i'm like in the uk i don't drink a lot like i'll have you know a weekend here with the boys we'll i go you know to the friends and go all out whatever that's very rare when i go away on trips for to film in it's heavy mm -hmm. not in the sense of like every night's heavy it's like we're drinking a lot yes yeah. we're filming we're drinking on set there's parties that they're yeah. organizing for us um but it's at a stage where i'm really happy to know that i can train hard and have a few drinks and not feel like oh my god i need to panic i shouldn't have drunk or else like i'm fine with it whereas before i'd hate myself if i drank too much so there's like a healthy relationship with it now what well, from like a confidence point of view does that ever affect you where you're like right i need to have a drink because i mean i don't you don't kind of come across the person who needs alcohol to, to kind of like unlock a, another level of confidence but has no. that ever been a thing for you because i know for, for some guys it can be in terms like i know it's definitely been for me like in the past where i'm like i need to have a couple of drinks otherwise like i'm not going to be as confident and like chatting. In, in the past yeah so way back then i needed to drink to be able to talk to people and to like go on dates and now now i i'm out of the boys i'm the one who always has a sober date yeah like i prefer it i don't need to drink to have a good time don't get me wrong like when i have a drink there's a different side of mars that comes out mm -hmm. and it's like this you know i'm very loud i'll be fun and you know there there is that but i don't need i my thing with drinking is sometimes i'll over drink to numb myself so if mm. i'm having a bad time okay and i need to get like i need to forget things i'll just drink like that happens to me so that's when it's unhealthy uh but that's like again, again that is very rare mm. when that doesn't happen i think it is definitely more socially acceptable to be sober on a night out though and yeah. there's not as much pressure from friends to like at uni i didn't want to drink loads i was just it just first year yeah absolutely wild but then second year i started creating businesses and i just mm. had a different headset but they always used to pressure me like you're so boring whereas that my word. friends now if i don't want to drink on a night out i'll just have a glass of red and i'm fine yeah. and they're not going to pressurize if they did i'd be like you're not a fucking friend of course of friends like, are, like i will go out sometimes like guys are different like i yawned mm. once and people bought me like a pint of jaeger bomb and i had to drink it weird. that was like some, what, some oh it's protocol wasn't it yeah a hundred percent you but like i had a conversation with my friend um literally two days ago and um we've had trust me we've had our fun me and him we've had a lot of fun we've been in crazy experiences and we've done a lot and i we went skiing recently and we went uh we do it every year and i didn't want to go i've got so much going on at the moment mm. i haven't got the time to go out and get drunk however it was my trip organizing and also it was slightly an influencer trip because I was working with a chalet and we were doing things for them and we were working with super dry and all that. So it made sense to do this big trip and, mm -hmm. and work all together. But uh, I told my friends, I was like, um, there was no snow before we were going. So I was, like, I was hoping, I was like, okay, hopefully there's no snow. And then like two days before it stormed in and there was no snow. I was like, yeah, let's go, I can't <laughs> wait. Cool. I got there and I remember being in my head going, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, I can't be. I went, fuck it, I'm gonna drink. So I drank two days like too, way too much mm. and i woke up feeling worse because i was like my anxiety of what i have to do is not being done i'm out here and we got back and i said to my mate the uh literally two years ago i was like look i'm just letting you know i'm prioritizing my work at the moment if even if it's my it's my mate's birthday i'm not gonna drink on his birthday i'm gonna go out and see him have dinner and it's great um and he was like please can you also like help me out with that and be there and be accountable for me as well i went to a sky mm. event for this premiere and he picked up a cider i was like why are you drinking that cider what's the point we're going to see a movie like it's fine you don't have to yeah. do that so yeah you're right and it's all the, those little things and that's what shows me that there's a real friendship there yeah. because it's like instead of saying oh you're boring mate come on drink it's like i respect what you're doing i respect mm -hmm. your hustle i respect that right now i don't want to drink i'm i'm taking time for myself mm -hmm. and that is it yeah. and being surrounded by those people is like so so important oh so important like really important because i think it also shines light on the people who are like, oh you're so boring i'm like but i don't need i don't need alcohol at this moment in my life mm. i just don't need it maybe you do yeah that's fine you do you don't push whatever issue you're having onto me i'm not boring i just yeah. don't want to drink how's your how do you guys would drink like what's the do you drink a lot? Do you, do you have- I love red wine, Same. love an espresso martini. I will happily just have a glass of red wine on a night out, yeah. have a glass of wine, just me and Ben at the weekend. We do, I won't drink heavily and it's like a big occasion. Like we had the races in September. I can't remember getting home. 
like that but i've not done that for maybe like a year yeah it's just i have like a phobia of hangovers i it i have like generalized anxiety anyway so when i'm hungover i'm hungover for like three it. days and i i just hate myself don't like the way it makes me feel but love a few on the weekend yeah, like occasionally but tipsy. not yeah but not often i think it's like just, last summer for me i was like every weekend i was rotten yeah you had mm. a lot like i did I didn't but it th- made you want to go sober yeah, I did a little bit. Like I, I did that. I did the marathon last year, but I was kind of doing this like project on YouTube. Where I was like, it was was it like fourteen weeks worth of training, and every weekend I had something in, like boys' night out or someone's birthday or whatever yeah. was going on. So every weekend I was pissed. So I was kind of trying to show that, like, even if you've got things on and you've got like a heavy training schedule for like something like the marathon, you can still do it and have your weekends like drink and do whatever and have fun, and it actually worked okay. Mm-hmm. But then, like by the end of the summer, I was like. And like, you just I'm like I don't want to drink I'm again. done because like and obviously like through January I haven't really drank like productivity wise obviously great because you're not spending the day in bed you're not spending the day before like drinking eating so there is, there is kind of like perks but like most of the time if I drink I'm drinking to get fucked like well, yeah. well though, I mean who who actually enjoys drinking um, vodka coke or yes. uh, rum and like uh, I love so I'm the same as you I love red wine right also I'm French so yeah. my dad bought me up on red wine I had my first red wine when I was eight. Really? Love that. Yeah. Yeah. They get, <laughs> get they do it to early. kids to get used to the palate and the bitterness. So I love red wine. And like the, one of my favorite nights with the boys, we went and had uh, loads of red wine and chatting. And at midnight, we all, that's it. We went home, going to bed. It's all good. You feel a bit, you know, rough in the morning, but yeah. it's, you're not, you're not feeling anxiety. You're not feeling regret. You're not feeling, oh my God, what did I do? Do yeah. I look like an idiot? It's like, yeah. that. You're like, oh my God, what a lovely night with the boys. And we're just chatting about deep stuff, funny things. And mm-hmm. and then I can still go to the gym and train. Whereas if you do that mad night out mm. every weekend, your training goes out the window. Your, everything goes out the window. You anxiety for like four, three, day, three, four days. It just sucks. And it's, mm-hmm. and it's uh, doing that when you're younger. Cool. Enjoy life. But when you you start getting older and you realize what your priorities are, like having kids, like building a, a family and buying a house or doing, you know, making sure you smash your career and you want to make money, whatever it is, then you go, okay, let's just, you know, park that for a bit. Mm-hmm. You see this new drink we were speaking about on the train? I think it's called, it's called Sunit. It's Sunita or something. Sunita. 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 It's this drink that has just come out. I think it's made by Gabba Labs, which I think is like a big lab, but it's like 0% hangover afterwards. Like these, these people were what? testing it on this radio show, and like, yeah, I was like pretty pissed off it. Three hours later, I was like, all right, didn't have hangovers the next day. It, I don't know if it's got like, I don't know if it's actually alcohol free. I had a screen of it before. And I it's, reckon it's got, it, it like, just gives you like serotonin. Apparently, it, apparently it does something, something to your brain where it, it thinks like it's pissed, but surely you're that's not, not healthy. It's called well, Sentia. Of, it's called yeah, Sentia. It's um, alcohol without the hangover, so no, no percent herbal spirit gets you drunk, but has no lasting effect. Um, reporters so found you get the it. feelings of like being pissed and being woozy and being drunk but then a couple of hours later you're fine and the, the, they were asked as well about like can you drive afterwards and they didn't categorically say no they said just be responsible because if, if, if there's no alcohol in it like yep. how, could you, if you got pulled over there wouldn't be any any alcohol in the system but then again pregnant people can't have it and there was something else yeah. quite, so oh it's like the, for her 200 mil bottle it's like 30 quid so there's obviously I don't I mean in that, in that sense it's just like there don't, must be just something don't, in yeah. it that's not good. chemically chemically you, you're creating a, a drink that removes a hangover that does something to your brain that's not good it's like vapes or isn't it for cigarettes like there's, there's chemicals and stuff in vapes, the vapes and man, that's so bad God I got into my vapes did you yeah I got into my vapes I'm so glad I can't they're like, really bad for you aren't they so they're worse than cigarettes how do young kids of like sixteen why also it's just like who one night out actually Ben was really drunk and I just came back from the toilet or something and he was vaping and I was like I've got the oh, ick cigars, I was like get it yeah, out of your mouth I was like that is just icky I was like what yeah. are you doing yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just weird, it's weird. Uh, I saw literally yesterday I was going to the gym and these group of girls they were like must have been honestly 14 or 16 and they were so vaping rough. and I was looking at them I was like what are you doing yeah it's also just like quite that's like, just unattractive no and it's just not it's good just don't do like, that. Yeah, it's not no. healthy it's not big it's not clever no it isn't put it if, down if a, if a woman smokes that a turn off you turn yeah. off yeah that's i used to smoke i used to be a smoker right so i used to love the, the smell of coffee and cigarette breath in the morning it's not that it's that was a me. big thing in france oh and italy God. and stuff yeah. like europe yeah, yeah I, saw, I smoked when i was like 14 like like red malibu reds like i was a yeah. full-on smoker um and my first relationship she was a smoker and it was like you know 
now if I smell any tobacco cigarettes on a girl, I'm no, don't even kiss me, don't go near me, I don't care how hot you are, I'm not interested. Like cigarette smell is disgusting. Yeah, it's yeah. horrible. Yeah. I've Apart never. From cigars. Yeah, so Ben, ben likes It tastes nice cigar. and it's like, also it's, the scent is quite nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't, like, no. I, I've got a little cigar room at home, yeah. I had one of the, the, the guys around one, one day and we were having, we having a coffee and a cigar, which is, which is quite sound. nice. No joke. I went to open the door, mate, there was just towels wedged underneath the door. No, so it's because, like, <laughs> so <laughs> Ben has, I've got like a lovely room upstairs that's like my room. So Ben has like a gentleman's room where he nice. watches football and cigars and nice. rum and whiskey collection. Oh my God, the, cig- the smell, it was like, I, I walked into the hall and I was like, fuck. I was like, my whole house, like, I was like, I was like, my hair smells of it. So I put towels and everything, like blocked him in his room Hot and he's trying to get out yeah. and he was like, what yeah, are you doing? Right, yeah. And I was like, I'm really sorry, but it stinks. I was like, do it out the window. I love that smell though. Yeah, it's great. You can get candles in, now. In your house. Cognac really? and like, yeah. Don't and tell cigars. him about the candles. I'm not in my oh, house. It's amazing. <laughs> organizing even. Such a, yeah, 100%. Yeah, you can I'm come there. to gentlemen's night. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, and you'll have towels at the door yeah. because. No, I love that. That's brilliant. I'm like, it literally, it literally stinks. Yeah, yeah, should we do like two or three quick fire questions? Yeah. I mean, God, I feel like I could talk for hours. Uh, oh my God. But we God. don't have hours. Oh, I can't believe it's 3.30. Have you missed it. something already? I've got to go to a suit, uh, <laughs> a suit uh, thing around the, uh, near here. What time at? 3.30, you're supposed to be there. That was good. Should we do one fire question? Yeah. I don't we'll think do, I've even we got can do, a... We can do two or three, whatever, and then... then okay, quick go. fire. Go. Do you dream in French? No. Great news. There you go. That's quick fire <laughs> question. Okay. No, um, not at all. Ask if he was in school with Tom Holland. Yes, I was. Really? Oh, and he was a dick. <gasps> was he really? Why was he was a dick? He? He does, he, look, honestly, he's lovely. He's such a nice guy. Um, we have a mutual friend and he's best friends with him and he's really, really cool. But at school, he just did that movie with the when he was really young with Impossible. Chris Hemsworth. Impossible. And he came in, he just started school and he was like, just done a film, like, you know, all that. And we were like, oh, come on. Now I regret it. I was like, I should have been his best mate. But <laughs> but he's, he's a lo- lovely guy, lovely guy. I, I know he's a lovely guy. But Did you swoop, then, a, swoop in on any of his his women? Who was Tom? Who was dating? No. That would have been a good claim to it. No, he, was, he was a dick, but. <laughs> Shit, I got his one. No, I got his <laughs> We can't do any more quick fire. Okay. Okay. And do you know what? This happened before as well. I looked when we were with time, you and yeah. I was like, fucking hell. That's the thing podcasting though, just goes so quick. It's great. Yeah. Um, but where can more people find you um you can find me all over the internet really just type my name and i'm pretty much there <laughs> type, type me and you've got a podcast got a podcast it's called playtime uh it's a very playful kind of podcast it talks about uh gossip relationships and a bit of like sex and we kind of what we spoke about today mm-hmm. about like how men and women are and um just a fun place where it's unstructured. It's very like go in, chat, and then have a laugh. Open conversation. Yeah. Love that. So YouTube people, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you're listening on Spotify or iTunes. Make sure you rate it. Tag us in everything. Obviously, hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll catch you next week. Bye, guys.